What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Willie and today I'm gonna be doing a special series that's gonna be all about digitizing. Because let's face it, when you're just starting out in embroidery, most people outsource this step. But no matter what, if you're doing digitizing or if you're outsourcing it from someone else, you still need to know the basics of digitizing a good patch. Aside from the backing you choose or the needle size or thread weight or any of those things that you need to worry about, if your design isn't digitized properly, it will not embroider properly. I'll actually jump into the digitizing software, Chroma, which comes with your embroidery machine and I'll actually show you a step-by-step -step on how you can digitize this patch right here. Then I'll actually embroider the patch so you can see the results. All right, let's get started. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the digitizing portion of this video. Now I'm going to be using Chroma and I'm going to be using the Lugs version. Now Chroma is a digitizing software that I use on all of my videos and I preferably like to use the Lugs version because it has all the tools I need to make my job more efficient. If you guys want to learn more about this digitizing software, scroll down to the description below and we'll have a link there for you. Okay now, let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is drag over my design onto the digitizing software and then once I do that, you're going to see it on the screen. Now this design looks pretty simple and you can easily auto digitizing it using the software but I'm going to show you how you could do it manually. There's many ways that you can digitize a patch. Now, in my case, I'm going to be using very thick stabilizer. If you're using a material that is either stretchy or flimsy, make sure that you run a test on a similar material. This way you know that you won't lose registration depending on where your angles are set to. Now I'm going to start off with the mountains because they're in the background. Then I'll work my way up to the sun, then the sky, then afterwards, I'll do the trees, and after the trees, I'll do the water. Lastly, I'll do the cabin and the border around the patch. Now, I'm going to start off with selecting my complex fill tool, and I'm going to zoom in and follow the line. Digitizing is very simple. It's really just a tracing tool. Now what I'm doing here is making sure that all my points are where they should and that my angle lines are where I need it to be. Now as you can see some of these points are squared. This means that they are straight lines. When you see a circle this means that it has a curve. Depending on what computer you're using you can press either control and hold down the key while selecting the next point and this will cause the lines to curve. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my starting point, which is this green point here on the bottom, and I'm going to select the red, which is my stop point, all the way at the top. Now, like I said before, I'm going to be using a very thick stabilizer, so I don't really need to worry about this this much. I just always like to start off from the bottom and work my way up to the top. In some cases, when the design is very large, I tend to do the opposite. I can have some going up and some going down, some going side, some going the other side, so I don't have the same angles. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is right click outside and I'm going to show you exactly what it does. Now you're gonna see how it starts off from one side and then it goes from the bottom and then it does the top afterwards. Now I'm going to show you a quicker process when you're using Chroma Lux. So what I'm going to do is go into my complex fill and then I'm going to select the magic wand. By doing this, it's going to activate the auto digitizing but just on the portion that I needed to auto digitize. So for example, if I left click on the sun, it automatically adds the border around it. Now all I have to do is right click and it automatically does the area that has the same color. Now you do always have to go in there and do some minor editing. So what I'm going to do is select the sun, make sure that I am on a yellow uh, color. And then I'm going to go over to my shaping tool. And now I can make the border a little bit cleaner. So as you can see here, I can edit this and make it into a line instead. Do the same thing on these points and this one as well. 
okay now what i'm going to do is see how it looks but without my bitmap so i'm going to click on this just so i can hide it and now you can see how nice and crisp it's starting to look all right now i'm going to do this area here which is the sky now instead of doing this i'm going to make my job easier by just selecting the whole thing instead of just one piece at a time so i'm going to use my complex fill I'm going to deactivate the magic wand and now I'm going to start off on this corner here. You can start off anywhere and then edit it afterwards. Then you're going to go and make these points. And after this I'm going to press the control key and hold it down so that I can make the curve line. Now I'm going to let it go so I can make a straight line and follow the same process all around this design. All right, now I'm going to select it and select this as a different color. Now that this part is completed, I'm going to just go into my shaping tool and kind of do the same thing I did before. I'm going to start it on one side and then I'm going to end it on the other side. This time I want to end it over on to the right. So, and I'm going to also change my angle just a tiny bit. So what I did here is adjusted my angle so it doesn't look like the rest of the design. And I have it to start off on the left going all the way across to the right. Now let's see how that's going to look once it's actually being stitched. Let's go to the slow redraw and take a look at it. Okay, that looks good. Now the next step I'm going to do is the water. And this part looks a little bit more complicated but in reality is very simple. I'm going to show you how. You can use a complex fill and you can use the magic wand. Now I'm going to already select the color. So all you do is right click and then left. In this section you don't have to edit it too much because it's a simple part of this design. So I'm going to do the same thing on the rest. I'm going to select a different color. Right click, left click, right click, left click and just follow the same process okay so that was pretty simple now what i'm going to do next is the cabin now for this i'm going to be using sort of the same technique but instead of using the complex fill i'm going to go over to a satin because it'll actually look a lot better once it's stitched up now for the cabin i'm going to be using the same process just with a satin tool instead of the complex fill tool now i'm going to select the color select the cabin and here we go. Now, as you can see, there's some angles here that don't look right, so we can always adjust this. First thing I'm going to do is delete all my angle lines. And now I'm going to edit my split line. Now I could have this split line here, or I could just take it off. Now I'm gonna delete this one instead and just add angle lines and see how it comes out. Okay, this doesn't look that bad. But now when I add some density onto the sand stitch, it will look better. Now this looks way better once I added the density. Now all I have to do is make sure that all my points are correct. For example, this one here, you can tell that it's missing a piece. So what I'm going to do is add a point and I'm going to make sure it's a line. I'm going to bring it all the way up here. And you could even delete this one because we don't need it. Now I want to start this design over on the bottom and then end it over on the other side so that now you have an underlay and then after underlay it does a satin stitch and then the satin stitch will start off on the right come up and finish up on the left all right so now let's go on to the lower part of the cabin using the same process as you can see we have some lines here we can take these off afterwards or you could do it now all right, so I'm going to edit these two. First thing I'm going to do is click on the first one and I'm going to choose my shaping tool. Now I'm going to delete all my angle lines and just add one angle line because I don't need too many in this area. Now the last thing I'm going to do is start it off on the top and finish it on the bottom. And now I'm going to edit the outline to make sure that the design comes out perfect. 
I'm going to add some density onto this one as well. Now you can see it's starting to look better. I'm going to do the same thing to this side, or you can simply just copy and paste. So for example, if I delete this one, now what you could do is you can copy and paste the one on the left so you don't have to do the same edits to the one on the right. Now once you copy and paste, make sure that you go onto the top and you select the mirror tool and then you can place it where you need it to be. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to select my complex fill. Now what I want to do is digitize this background manually and then I'll change the order so it could be behind the cabin. So I'm going to select my complex fill. Now I always like to overlap my stitches so I don't have any open gaps between my designs. Now to make this in the right order, I'm going to select it and then I'm going to right click, order, and send it backwards. I'm going to do that one more time. And I'm going to select this as a different color so you're able to notice the whole cabin. All right, now I'm going to do the lines inside and then lastly, I'm going to do the border. But to do the lines on the inside, I'm going to move over my bitmap to the front so that I could just follow that instead. By choosing the bitmap and selecting the move to the front tool on the top of the software, now I'm able to see just my bitmap and now the stitches are gonna be in the background. So this way I can be more organized. Now my next step is going to be moving my bitmap over to the front so I could be able to trace over the trees. I'm going to select the bitmap and then I'm going to select the move to the front tool on the top. And now I'm able to see just the design while the stitches stay in the background. Now for this, I'm just going to do one. And for this one, you can copy and paste doing the same process. Now I'm going to convert the stitches into a satin stitch. So I'm going to go onto the pattern and select satin. Then I'm going to press apply. Now I'm going to add a little bit more density. That looks nice and neat. All I have to do is just copy and paste. Okay. Now for the two in the corners, I'm just going to do one and follow the same process. If you do have to make some minor adjustments, you can do so by selecting the shape tool. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to do is the background trees. Now all I have to do is select one of the trees, copy and paste it, and just put it right over. Now the only difference is that I'm going to change this into a darker green. And follow the same process. Now I'm going to get the background trees and group them. You can do this by right clicking and selecting the group icon. Now this allows me to edit this design as a group instead of one by one, as you can see here. So now I'm going to transfer over this first tree I did, order it to the front so it can be with the other group. Now I'm also going to group the front trees just in case if I make any changes, I make it to all of them instead of just one at a time. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of stitches going everywhere, but that's totally fine because towards the end, we're going to make sure everything is being trimmed. Now, my next step is going to be digitizing the lines inside of the design, and then I'm going to finish it up with the border around. Now, for this, I'm going to be using my steel tool, and I'm just going to follow the lines. So, I'm going to change the width of this line to a 2.0, and then I'm going to change the density over to a 0.3 and now it looks a lot cleaner. I'm going to follow the same process all around the design. Now what I'm going to do next is combine all of these together so it can become just one design. So I'm going to select just the top area. I'm going to right click 
and press combine. Now for my last step, I'm going to go over to the art tool and I'm going to select the ellipse and now I'm going to be able to do one full circle. Now by selecting this tool, I'm able to make a perfect circle without having to make too many edits. So after I put it into the size that I need it to be, I can then go ahead and right click, convert to, now I'm going to use this as an applique. Now I did put this as an applique, but we're doing a patch, it's not really an applique. So we want to take the placement line out and the tack down stitch to get out as well. And what I could do now is make my density a little bit thicker and edit the width. All right, so now let's go ahead and clean this up. The first thing I'm going to do is delete my bitmap. And now to clean everything up, all I have to do is select the whole design, go on to the commands tab, and on the end command, I'm going to leave it as a trim. Now you can really see the difference. All right, so now all I have to do is just take a quick overlook on how it's actually going to embroider. All right, so it looks like we're done. All I'm gonna do is save my design as a DST file and take it over to the machine. So before I begin, if you're interested in more videos that show the different ways that you can embroider patches, I've linked them down in the description below. And if you have any requests for other digitizing projects, write them in the comments below. All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be using the one and only, the Recoma MT1501. This is a 15 needle machine that's able to run up to a thousand stitches a minute and it has a really wide space for you to be able to do a bunch of things on this machine. If you guys want to learn more about this machine, scroll down to the description below. So right now I'm going to be testing that first design that we just digitized to see how it comes out. Hopefully it comes out perfect and I don't have to do anything about it. Most of the times you always have to edit something here and there. So let's see what happens on this one. Let's go ahead and put the USB in, insert it and choose the design. This one is around 14,000 stitches, so it should take us around 15 to 17 minutes max, depending on the trims. So obviously when you're running at 1,000 stitches a minute, you're gonna be adding a little bit of tension over to your threads. So what I'm gonna do is just a quick fix. I'm gonna bring this up just one so I can run at 1,000, not have so much tension on my threads and not have too many thread breaks. So putting this up actually decreases your tensions. All right, so here we have our stabilizer. This is really thick cutaway. We're gonna be using this even for our regular uh, stitch out. So definitely this is gonna be really good. You don't need anything else, just nice and thick stabilizer. You could use other materials if you like. That's up to you and up to the, the type of design that you're gonna be using and what you want out of it. So this hoop is the Mighty Hoop. This is a magnetic hoop. Uh, if you guys wanna learn more about this, you can scroll down to the description below. You can find there where you can purchase this or you can just go to shop.recoma.com. Now, I like to use these kind of hoops. It just makes my life so much easier, to be honest with you. And I'm using the eight by nine. I don't need so much space, but it's the first one I found, so I'm gonna be using this one. All right, let's go ahead and press the start button. Hopefully, we don't have to edit it. Cross your fingers. So the design is completed. Let's go ahead and hoop it out so we can actually see it and inspect it. All right, so right off the back, what I'm seeing here is this area here. It looks kind of messy, even though it looked really good on uh, the picture uh, that the software was showing us. So I'm definitely gonna be changing this part around, maybe simplifying a little bit more. Also, this area here is just one little blue part that doesn't really show as much. So I'll probably just get rid of this one uh, black ray here so it can show the whole thing. I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference, so that's why I will do that. Also, the border around, I can tell the border is not as thick as I would like it to be. For patches, you want the border to be kind of thick, so I'm gonna make sure I make this border thicker than usual. 
And the last thing I did notice on the process was the trees. The trees, every time it did uh, one tree, it trimmed when you could easily just have it go under it and it just hide those stitches uh, under this black one here, this black line. So I could have done that easily. I'm going to go ahead and fix that as well. Other than that, overall, it looks pretty good. Uh, just to my personal opinion, I'd rather make it perfect. Okay, so after running the first test, I noticed there were some things that we can change to make the design look better. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off one of these. So the way to do that is to go back into the top area where we had combined them. And now instead of combining, we're going to break it apart. So I'm able to now edit them by pieces. All right, so this one's it. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And now I'm just going to combine them again. Now the next thing I need to edit would be this area here because it looks very messy once it's embroidered. So I'm going to go ahead and delete most of this and just leave one plain color. Okay, so I'm going to select my complex fill. I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to mirror it, send it over to this side. Now I'm going to group these two so that I can use them together and I'm going to move it towards the back. Now the last thing I'm going to do is take off all of these trims on the trees. So what I'm going to do is have them run throughout this line in the bottom instead and just have one trim on this side going over to the other side. So I have to first ungroup them and then edit them one by one. But all I really have to do is start and stop to the area that's closest to the next one. Now what I'm going to do is delete those trims. So I'm going to go over to my stitch tool and I'm going to look for the trims. Here we have the first one, I'm going to delete this one. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the trees that are in the front. I'm going to ungroup and I'm going to edit one by one. Now I'm going to go back to my stitch tool and delete those trims. Okay, well I don't want to delete this one just because it's jumping over, so I'm going to leave that one. But I will be deleting the rest of them. Alright, so the last thing I have to do is make my border a little bit thicker. I'm also going to make the inside just a bit thicker. So the way I do this is go over to the border and I'm going to add the width to a 4.5. There we go. And now I'm also going to be adding the width of the steel to a 3.5. All right, now remember this looks like this here, but once this is stitched out, it's going to look very different. These satin stitches will be pulling against each other, making it thinner than what it actually looks on the software. Now, all right, all I have to do now is clean it up. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to select everything, go back to my commands tab, and select the end command as a trim. Now let's go ahead and run this test and see how it comes out. All right, so after making those adjustments, now I'm going to go ahead and run the second test. I uh, re-hooped this to the side just for video purposes so you guys can see the difference. And I'm going to be embroidering this one on the left side so you guys can really see the difference between the first test and the second test. Hopefully, this will be the last test. This one came out pretty good, so I believe it will. Let's go ahead and check it out.
Okay, so it is completed. Let's go ahead and bring it out so we can inspect it. And you can see a huge difference. This looks a whole lot better than this one. The size did uh, grow a little bit because I had to make the border a little bigger. But in the process of the trees, you can tell that it didn't have so many trims. It actually, it's hidden under this black uh, satin stitches. And I simplified this area here, as you can see, now it looks a little neater in there. Also, you can tell how I made this just a little bit pointy, just on this side. You can see how it goes all the way to the top now. And I simplified the water in the back and I left it just for one color. As you can see, this looks kind of messy in there compared to this. All right, guys, so I think we're ready for the production run. Let's go ahead and take this off. Let's get some uh, stabilizer. Let's hoop it in a bigger uh, Mighty Hoop, which is the magnetic hoops, like I explained to you guys earlier before. And we're gonna do about six of them just so you guys can see how it runs and how it's gonna come out. Afterwards, we're gonna clean it up and we're pretty much set. All right, let's get started. As you can see, we went from 14,000 stitches to 78,878, meaning we're gonna be here for a while. So let's go ahead and get started. All we have to do is press start and we'll come back later on to see how it's doing. Alright guys, so this is pretty much it. All I have to do now is just clean it up. I'm gonna use these little scissors here that have a little nice curve to it so I can really get in there. And then afterwards, I'm going to use the lighter just to burn around any excess threads. Alright guys, so here we have the finished patch. As you can see, now it looks nice and neat. Now we can use this either to put it on a sweater or you can put this patch on a hat. Whatever you like, it's pretty much ready to go now. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you were able to learn more about the digitizing process overall, and especially what makes embroidering patches unique so that you can replicate this process on your next project. Now, if you have any questions about what I showed you today, make sure you write them down in the comments below and my team and I will answer them for you or even make another episode for your question. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you scroll down and subscribe with the button below and also press that thumbs up for a like if you enjoyed this video. Also, if you're not already following us on Facebook, join our group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery, to share your questions and get advice from myself and our team at Recoma. Also, for the latest in the world of decorated apparel, follow us on our Instagram page at Recoma HQ. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.